Out on the vast open prairies, there lived a young, beautiful couple. Their love for each other was such that they had become man and wife. In fact, the people had never seen anyone so much in love. Just to be near these two would make your heart glad. They were a delight to be near. They always dressed in the finest clothes, which the young wife made with great care. Her hair shone like the raven's wing, and her smile would melt the hardest heart. The young husband kept himself clean and immaculately dressed. His hair was perfectly braided, and he always had good words for everyone in the village. They were favorites with everyone, and their happiness spread among the people. One morning, the young man woke up and looked over at his beautiful wife, who was still peacefully sleeping, and thought, I will make her breakfast as a surprise. He went outside and cheerfully set about starting a fire and cooking a breakfast for the both of them. He took two steaming bowls of food into their teepee and placed them near his sleeping wife. He then attempted to shake her out of her deep sleep. She didn't move. He shook her a little harder. She still didn't move. The unthinkable entered his mind as he shook her again, this time very hard. The terrible reality dawned on him. His loving young wife had passed into the spirit world during the night. The young man ran from his lodge, screaming and crying. The warriors grabbed their weapons, thinking the village was under attack, but the women, well, the women knew better. On seeing the grieving husband, they realized what must have happened. Some went into his lodge to look after his wife's body, while others led the emotional young man away from his teepee, trying their best to comfort him in this time of uncontrollable grief. After his wife's death, the young man fell apart. His nature totally changed. He became rude and intolerant of others, and he neither bathed nor took care of any of his personal requirements. For a while, his behavior was permitted, and the elders tried to counsel him to bring his grieving to an end, but he wouldn't listen. There was a normal mourning period, respectfully called for by the elders, but soon, it came time for the living to get on with their lives. When that time came, the elders approached the young man and told him that his behavior would no longer be tolerated. The young man packed up his belongings and he left the village. He headed into the mountains where he set up his teepee and there he would sit hour after hour thinking and brooding about his wife, mourning her loss and consumed with grief. The young man who had always been such a clean and tidy person in everything to do with his appearance now let himself completely go. His hair hung dirty and uncombed and was now left unbraided. His face and his body were filthy. His clothes were tattered and torn. He'd become a pathetic shadow of his former self. The man had stopped caring for even his most basic needs. One morning, he was sitting still feeling sorry for himself when off in the distance he saw a pony and rider approaching his camp. Good, he thought. Maybe it's an enemy, and when he finds me, he will kill me. Then perhaps I will be able to be with my beautiful wife again. As the pony and rider got closer, he was sure that he recognized his dead wife as the rider. But it couldn't be. This woman, although she resembled his wife, was slovenly, filthy, my wife would not let herself get into such a mess, he thought. The horse and rider were almost at his camp when he recognized her, and he shouted, It is you, my wife, you have returned from the dead. But even with his rejoicing, he was confused. He asked her, Why are you this way? What has happened to your beautiful clothes? Why is your hair not combed? It is so dirty. I have never seen you this way. 
Have you come from the spirit world? If so, why are you so filthy? I thought that world would be a wonderful, clean place. Oh, it is, my husband, but I cannot go there. You see, I have become the mirror of you. Take a good look at yourself. You are as filthy as I am. You are the reason I am this way. I am this way because you will not let me go to the Creator. Until you stop grieving and let the sadness go from your heart, I cannot enter the spirit world. Please, don't be afraid to let the power of the Creator help you heal. There will be a magic in letting go of your grief, my husband. Mourning too long has become an obstacle to your need. The husband cried, It is you that I need. How can I let you go? I loved you much more than life itself. No, what you need, my beloved husband, is happiness. You must let go of your sadness. Just remember our good times, only the times that bring smiles to your lips. Good memories can keep our love alive. You must let your heartache and anger go, or it will destroy you. The man closed his eyes, thinking over his wife's words. When he looked up, she was gone. But now he understood that he had to let the painful memories of his wife's passing go. He tore off his dirty clothes and bathed in a nearby stream, and he thought of all the good times he had been given with his beautiful wife. He cried and he cried, unashamed. But these were tears of happiness that streamed down his face. These happy thoughts were reflections of all the joy she had brought him. Letting go had finally allowed his loved one to enter the beautiful red world of the spirits, where she now belonged. He now had the right to continue a normal life.